I am legitimately happy to see this car here. Now, it's not complete yet. No, 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 not complete. Um, but visually, kind of looks like it is. Uh, so basically we did loads and loads of work to try and get the car ready for the Howl Race engineering guys, for the wiring. We did another full mad day, like more 16 an hour days last week than we've done in a very long time. So this is basically part nine of the build video. As yeah. many of you probably aren't aware, we are a business and I was too busy, busy doing business things so we couldn't film much on the last two days of this build. Yeah, so um, we really, really were on a tight deadline because we we're trying to get to Coventry Motor Fest. Uh, so yeah, apologies for the lack of content in, during the build, but basically yeah, it kind of went from the end of episode what eight that we've just eight done to you guys put the exhaust it's on. Done. Ta -da. Wow. Visually, so yeah, it looks like um, a car. We because it was being on, it was on display at the Al Alcon stand um, at um, Coventry Motor Fest. We needed it to look right, so that became priority one to basically. Get the panels on, get Gaz's uh, body, body guide down, uh, get, get all the carbon fiber panels on, side skirts, doors, mirrors, everything in so as much as possible it looks like a complete car. And we weren't trying to dupe anybody, it's still, it's got no rear exhaust tailpipes or uh, under the bonnet, it's not complete at all, we haven't got intakes or anything like that. But basically, yeah, we just wanted to put it under this display to show what it will be. It's had the finishing touches applied without being finished. Yes. So let's rewind a little. How did it go with how? How? How off? How great engineering. Really good. They, um, but it's an incredibly complex job. One of the things that I guess if you, if you have a little poke in here, you can kind of see sort of the le level of electricery that we're dealing with with things like the, um, the E92 M3 shifter for the DCT. We've got... Um, it's like, custom the whole way through, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so right, all of the wiring so. basically we've just tucked up inside the dash for now to, to kind of hide it, but the, there is so much wiring going on in this car. We're controlling the um, MK60 ABS module, uh, the flat paddles, the gear stick, the dash, um, down to the engine loom and everything like that. I just that. want to also but, just very quickly to interrupt you. Yeah. No wires. Yes. That's the that's so, Cartec um, wireless flappy paddle. Oh, so cool. So Didn't got, you have Cartec on the Corolla to yeah, begin so with? Yeah, this is actually the same the same uh, thing as on our 86 that oh, we had okay. on our 86. We've basically just had an upgraded version with the flappy paddles added. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's far from complete, but there's essentially there's another day's worth of um, wiring from these guys, and hopefully we'll be in a position to to actually press the button, which might be one of these buttons, and it'll, it'll start. So that was the Thursday, and then on the Friday was the, the bodywork day, essentially, wasn't it? Yeah. So you, Gaz, and Craig, and Colin all here as well? Yeah. All helping, trying to get the car ready for Coventry. Yeah, so we all got stuck into making a load of parts that fit the car, some of which haven't previously been on it, and some that have been in storage, so things like the side skirts were a bit of a nightmare. Um, because it had actually been compressed in storage at some point before we owned them. Is so that what to, happened? Yeah, we're having to separate them out to get them to fit properly, mm. heat stuff up. Uh, a lot of this is is custom and fiberglass and uh, carbon parts, so it doesn't fit like stock. Uh, and, but I was really particular about sort of wanting reasonably decent shut lines and everything. I was going to say, the panel so, gaps, for yeah. considering everything that you've got on this car, are really, really good. Uh, Thing because that was one thing that I personally haven't seen. 
yeah so we we finished this externally so this is now so this is we basically separated the the boot lid here so that this can stay um, on its own releases there and this is, right. this is permanently attached is that sprayed or anodized in there? it's just sprayed it for looks the moment. Real, it looks really good, really good. yeah again this was right down to the wire stuff so that that stays that's bonded in place and it's sealed relatively well uh, down there so the water shouldn't be an issue and basically there's just a pipe going to the tank there so that we can refuel relatively normally um, without having to remove a complicated boot lid every time. The spoiler looks super good. Yeah, and the, that's, you know, these are the final touches that really make it look how I wanted it to look. Uh, the other thing, of course, is sort of uh, setting the suspension is one thing that I did. We'd already set the, the damper length um, to bring the bump stops into play at the correct time, as we showed you in one of the other episodes. But now we set the, uh, the ride height on the spring perch basically so it's not finished um, it needs it's it's basically in the process of being corner weighted again which is why you might might have may have noticed that um, are there enough my, my kilos weight, in here yeah, there's, there's 100 <laughs> kilos in there I weigh 98 at the moment so, <laughs> so yeah that's the simulated weight and will we the car on a passenger seat uh, it will yes cool. but basically the, uh, I think as again we've already mentioned that's the other seat that will potentially go in, in this car is currently in a container wing its way from Japan because I had to send. Was oh, it that one? Was it? Yeah, so I had to send that to oh. Japan to fit into my 911 that I bought over there. So that's that'll be back, and we'll either use two of these, um, or I might because of how quick this car is going to be, I might actually look at running uh, one with the ears on it and a hands device because it is, you know, it's going to be pretty quick. I think this <laughs> yeah. car, and I'd like to be as safe as possible yeah yeah we'll we'll see about that though very they're, cool they're bloody expensive unless uh, Ricara is watching and wants to give us a pair of seats well um, let's not forget <laughs> obviously an e30 m3 has to have the word Ricaro here. yes it's kind of the rules so this is the rule well it's kind of the rule no oh it's, they do there's an association between uh, Ricaro and bmw okay. for years but it doesn't have race car seats in it no. so there's a lot, a lot of nice little touches like the door cards i don't think we've seen before yeah yeah, so those, those are really nice. Uh, we're lacking a door handle. We thought we had it, so the interior door handle. We need to do, need to dig one of those out. Is it a stocky thirty door handle? Uh, yeah, isn't it, it is. yeah. Uh, and then the carbon panels that you can see have, that have been made in the back there. Gaz has custom made those. We've got the carbon panel, um, which is the firewall, which is in again semi temporarily because we've still got to finish um, sealing it completely. So there's a few grommets missing, uh, and that needs to be fully safe, airtight. Um, in the case of a fire or anything like that you don't want anything coming through that and i think the the wheels look super super i was yeah, just about to mention really the wheels so with these were great. these did arrive originally in gold yeah bronze. they were bronze yeah bronze i think it's quite hard to um we've noticed it's quite hard to represent the color of this car accurately on camera um but it is a really really strong blue it it's is, very very vibrant yeah and uh kind of the more black stuff I started putting on it the, the more I liked it and the more I thought it just balanced mm. it out perfectly so yeah it's an equal black. opportunities vehicle yeah absolutely and don't forget obviously we've got our matching work wheels um aluminium wheel nuts and we're cool with using the aluminium ones on this because yeah. the wheels oh, oh, our looking for, like, uh, pretty sweet yeah. did you I paint mean, the board no, that no, how they come? no that's how they come they come what size are these brakes uh, they are 350s or three sixty or something like that which is a lot underneath the 17 inch wheel yeah um, and then that's not this bit here, it's not vinyl either, is it? It is that, vinyl, yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, that's vinyl. Yeah, so these are the trims that I had to source um, from BMW that I was worried about. I was looking for rubbing strips for the bumpers, and I couldn't source the centre one in particular. Um, eventually ended up getting it from Latvia, and when it turned up, it was uh, vinyl that you stick on, oh. and we could have cut it off our machine. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you live and you learn, and I've never owned an E30 M3 before, so there you go. So I think that almost wraps up just this small little update. Yeah. How big is the list? Um, it's still pretty comprehensive. We've got um, we've got at least a day of wiring with um, the Howell Race Engineering guys again. Uh, then we've got lots of stuff to sort out, like uh, the exhaust. We've got to, I've got to refabricate yeah. the rear part of the exhaust because I decided to not go with the E92 standard back box. Um, I've got lots of. Oh, in the first, yeah, sorry, yeah, the first video, you wanted the quad exhaust. Yeah, it looks, on look 
looking awful. So I'd bin the idea off, and that's why we've gone back to the normal tailpipe. Out the twin, the just on the left, yeah. yeah. And I might even go for a DTM upswept, you know, straight, oh, straight yeah, out of the yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little bit, I think a little bit. With a cheeky heat shield be behind it yes, as well. Exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh. um, but yeah, there's, there is, although it looks done to many in many people's eyes, it's kind of far from done. It's uh, a very complex car that we're going to have to do a lot of testing with as well. So I'm intending on seeing whether we can do some low speed stuff, maybe at our normal test venue, just the basic one like Birmingham Wheels or something like that. And then perhaps look at going to Brunting Thorpe and something and doing some higher speed stuff where we can really check the load on the gearbox and um, uh, the engine and everything like that and yeah. really dial it in a little and bit. And we just get yeah, dial in the aero as well because yeah. it should be quick enough to start yeah working on this a little bit yes i mean you might need to put a big wing on it i think it's a pretty big wing to be that's fair well, good, you know. that's going to create a lot of damage. that gurney flap i yeah. can assure you does way more than it looks yeah that <laughs> is that is <laughs> yeah <laughs> which quite is <laughs> quite special but yeah so um we'll we'll continue to keep you up to date yep. with this car as i say once again it's not finished i know it looks really pretty uh but we'll um be throwing a lot of hours at this it's car. definitely not on the and car, yeah. is it? just to point out to everybody it says driftworks on it but not it's for drifting not for drifting <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's confusing a lot of people which is i think it's one thing that i really i guess it kind i kind of enjoy about the car is that it is a full-on track car that's nothing to do with drifting but it's got driftworks all over it it's basically just that we are a company we love all sorts of cars we've got stance race drift um stupid pickup trucks um it's just the enjoyment riders. of cars yeah this is this is what we do at driftworks um have fun with cars and this is another sort of avenue that i've done for years in gt3s and the m3s and stuff like that but they've never been official driftworks cars of, as such so this is the first one with stickers on it but it's not really the first driftworks track car so, yeah. Well, yeah. so how was commentary it's really good yeah um the show is incredible the, uh, the weather was really good as, get, as you can probably tell by how burnt i am again and how unburnt i am because of yeah the because raining you were in BD, bdc weren't you yeah yeah it's really good the car was really went down really well um you it's can tell it's been at a show because yeah, it's got snot on it from children. Horrible little oiks. Please stop your children touching cars. Yeah, we had, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had, uh, Emmeline told me about a kid that was just plumped in the seat there as well. Some woman just opened the door, put a kid in, started taking pictures. The seat's not even bolted in. It's just plumped in there. So yeah, it's one of those, unfortunately. When you're that close to the public, it's, um, it's difficult to keep an eye on everybody and not everybody understands what goes into making cars like this. No somehow. respect. No respect. <laughs> no respect. <laughs> yeah. no so you're on the Alcon stand with yeah. Gobstopper 2 from Roger Clark, yeah. Tooley with his Rocky Bunny S15, and, and then the RS200, the yeah, yeah, with the Durand, which is, I think it was, it's fair to say it was um, probably the best stand there. I think it was were. nice that the Roger Clark guys were looking at the car and yeah. I think they were genuinely into it. Yeah. And they could see even on their, you know, because it's a dot on their sort of oh, radar sort of, of builds. Oh, absolutely. They're, but they totally thought, because it's, they really get the whole keep the car looking good yeah. thing as well. Yeah. All of their yeah, cars have, have always looked good and they've always been well engineered because they're almost a similar setup. It's an setup. understatement to say the least. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well engineered, yeah. <laughs> and, you, and were you about to say they're almost a similar setup to us because they're no, not? No, 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 no. <laughs> like, extrapolate what we do. We're like the setup that Craig has got machining yeah. little things. They do that but, but with on lots the of money. Money scale. <laughs> yeah. Lots of money. Yeah. 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 So that, I thought that's that was a really nice they thing they that they were totally into the car yeah, as well. So absolutely. Awesome. And we love those guys. So that's yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we just tried to do to do our best with it to keep it respectful and um, sort of the lines of the car good, but sort of in a modern way with modern stuff underneath yeah. it. Uh, do you know what? I'm just standing here now. I know these arches. You would not know, would you, that those aren't the real ones? I think I think a real E30 M3 enthusiast would know. Uh, yes, and, yes, uh, they would. But uh, at a glance, it just looks like yeah. you haven't. Well, that, that was why I spent it's that distance there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, hours and hours and hours and hours obsessing over over these arches because I, it's basically I think it's about it's about thirty to forty mil wider each arch, something like that. Is maybe. it that much? Yeah, it's really really wide compared to an E30 M3. Is this gap here the same as the one on the back? Yeah, basically we tried to make it cool. almost exactly the same. Um, but yeah, it's basically to run the wider track to get 
you know, to make it work better, but keep it looking respectful. Yeah. And that's also, that's kind of partly why the car's really low, but by Driftwork standards, some people might think it's not, you know, low enough, but the car has to work. It has to have suspension travel. This is, this is considered a very, very low M3. Uh, E30 M3, and um, well, we'll just see how it works out in, in suspension. It's got to go around the carousel, hasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah, long, if it, if long it story short, the gearbox sump off <laughs> first lap at the Nurburgring. I'm going to be pretty sad. disappointed. <laughs> so I think that wraps this up. If you've got any photos that you've taken of the E30, we'd love to see them. Yeah, so we, we would tag us on Instagram, yeah. Facebook, YouTube. If you've done a little vlog, that'd be we'll be pretty happy to see that. Yeah. And any questions about the build? You will happily yeah, answer. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll answer away. And yeah, just um, thanks for following the series so far um, of the build of this. We know we're not um, as comprehensive as some people in, in their build vlogs and stuff like that, but we do what we can whilst working to really tight deadlines and fitting it in amongst uh, yeah, normal day work. jobs. So uh, yeah, again, I also need to really, really thank the guys that um, put in the extra hours getting this ready. Craig from Dynatalk, obviously, who um, has done most of the work on this build and uh, Gaz who, from TJR who's done the bodywork side of things and they've both worked like ridiculously hard to get all this stuff ready oh. and oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jesus, you want to tell professional <laughs> cameraman <laughs> so yeah the guys are, the guys have worked really really hard to get this car to where it is now um, and the hours that we were putting in last week in particular and the week before were just absolutely insane and Craig it was like the old days yeah Craig does not do early mornings no he's not months. very good at it so uh, but yeah thank you very much guys and uh, yeah stay tuned